both readings today are good homily material. The first reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians that speaks about the body of Christ. The body of Christ with Christ as the head and the members of the body as the members of the body of Christ given different gifts, given different charisms. We all receive different gifts and different charisms from God. Not everybody is the same. But that is not what my homily today is going to be. I'd like to speak about the Gospel reading. And the story in the Gospel that we read today is only found in the Gospel of St. Luke. One of the characteristics, one of the features of the Gospel of Luke is that it is known as the Gospel of Women. Remember that. The Gospel of Luke is known as the Gospel of Women. I learned this from our teacher in Synoptics, the late Father Herman Wheeler, as we did buried here at Christ the King. It is not only the Gospel of Women, the Gospel of Luke is also the Gospel of Joy. It is the Gospel of the Poor. It is the Gospel of the Holy Spirit. And there are many other characteristics of the Gospel of Luke. But that is not my point today. Luke gives a lot of space to women. And the main character in our Gospel story today is a woman. A woman known as the widow of Nain, N-A-I-N. In Filipino, we will probably pronounce it as Nain, but in English, it is pronounced as Nain, the widow of Nain. It is one of the only three stories in the Gospel where the Lord is described as bringing a dead person back to life. Wow! Unimaginable. A dead person is brought back to life. No one else could bring a dead person back to life. Not the best hospital. Not the best doctor. Not the best medicine. Not even Kibuloy. My dear brothers and sisters, I remember a similar and one of the most dramatic stories in the Bible the story of Lazarus in John's Gospel who was also brought back to life by Jesus. And I'm sure you will also remember the story of the synagogue leader's daughter, although it is not categorically certain that this daughter had actually died and this daughter of the synagogue leader might have been in a coma or what they call catatonic state. In the thinking of the time, the gospel scene today is particularly depressing. It is sad. The story is sad. A woman who already lost her husband now lost her only son and the only son was the only means of the mother's support. This widowed woman is on the way to bury her only son, her one and only son, and imagine the unspeakable pain. Imagine the incomprehensible sorrow. Imagine the grief. Imagine the anguish this widowed woman had to undergo. I do not know how to describe it. How does it feel to bury a child? How does it feel to bury a child? How many parents have lost a child because of sickness or because of the war or because of accidents or for any other reason? Parents do not expect to bury their children. If you ask any father or any mother, they will tell you they will want their children to bury them Parents do not want to outlive their children. I remember reading a story recently about a father who lost a child, and this is what he said. No parent 
should have to bury a child. No mother or father should have to bury a son or a daughter. Mothers are not meant to bury their sons. It is not in the natural order of things. But in spite of this experience, this father said, I do not begrudge God. I do not curse God. I do not bemoan my lot. And though my heart keeps beating only to keep breaking, I do not ask why. My dear friends, Jesus himself is moved at the plight of the woman at Nain. At this point, for the very first time, Luke, the gospel writer, refers to Jesus as Lord, a title deserved or reserved only for God. Jesus approaches the leader. It is not a coffin as we know it today. Jesus approaches the litter, carrying the dead man. He touches the dead man, causing the bearers to stop. And then the Lord says, Young man, I tell you, arise. My dear friends, the reaction of the people around is one of awe and admiration. Fear says all of them and they said a great prophet has arisen among us god has visited us god has visited his people and they had no doubts about the origin of what they had seen taking place this is the work of god only god can raise a dead person back to life and not surprisingly the story is spread like wildfire wildfire all through the through judea and beyond and the episode prepares the way for the response of jesus to the disciples of john the baptist a little later but that is not included in our mass readings during this time my dear friends what is one of the lessons that we can learn from the gospel? There are many, but I'd like to propose one. Bring your pain to God. Bring your pain to God. Bring your sorrow. Bring your anguish to God in prayer, and God will take care. Amen.